What's up guys, today I thought it would be fun to sit down and talk about all of the dupes so far that have come out in 2023. And we're only a month into this year and already there have been so many dupes. It almost seems like a new trend amongst drugstore brands and I kind of have a little theory about that. So we all know that drugstore prices have been going up lately. And if you take, let's say a new L'Oreal mascara and you compare it to an older formula that was maybe 10 or $12 and we have this sitting at 14.99, it seems like a lot Lot. But if we take this and we compare it to a Charlotte Tilbury mascara, for example, then $14.99 doesn't quite seem so bad. So by coming out with dupes to higher end makeup, they're sort of tricking our brains and forcing us to compare the new prices to high end versus the old drugstore pricing, if that makes sense. Now, of course, this is just a theory. I don't have any proof to back this up. I just thought it kind of made sense. Instead of comparing the new prices to the old drugstore, let's compare drugstore makeup to high end and it just makes it look a whole lot better. That being said, it's not necessarily a bad thing because I think drugstore makeup in general just keeps getting better and better. So along with the price increases, we're getting better formulas. For example, when I compared the new Milani mascara to the Thrive. In that first video, I didn't really talk ingredients and I had a bunch of different comments down below saying, well, the Thrive one must use better ingredients. They're more of a clean brand. But the crazy thing is they didn't. When I actually went and looked at the ingredient list, I saw that the first nine ingredients of the Milani mascara were identical to the Thrive. So the quality is improving a lot, which is a good thing. We're actually getting a high-end formula here for much less than the cost of the high-end product. Yes, we're getting a price increase, but at the same time, it's only a couple of dollars. And the best thing about drugstore makeup versus high end is that the drugstore is constantly having sales and buy one, get one free and coupons. Or if you go to CVS, you can use your extra bucks. So most of the time you never really end up paying the sticker price for drugstore. So anyway, I didn't mean to go off on a little tangent, but I just wanted to share that with you because it's just a thought that came to me one day and I don't ever remember seeing this many intentional drugstore dupes before. And I've been doing this a long time. So with that said, Said, let's go ahead and just jump right into the dupes and we'll start out with this new sunscreen from e.l.f. I actually haven't talked about this yet on my channel and this is the Sun Touchable Woe Glow SPF 30 Broad Spectrum Sunscreen. So this claims to be sun protection plus a makeup primer and it definitely reminded me and a lot of other people of the Super Goop Glow Screen. Now this one is SPF 40 compared to the 30 in the e.l.f. but I have heard that anything above SPF 30 really doesn't add up to to that much more. And just like the e.l.f. formula, the Super Goop also claims to be a makeup gripping primer. In addition to sunscreen, it has more of a pearlescent finish and it's supposed to give your skin a little bit of a glow. And I love this idea because so many people are using the e.l.f. Halo Glow Primer or the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter under their makeup. Why not just put some SPF into a product like that and then you have your sun protection. I feel like so many people forget to wear sunscreen because it's not really the most fun product to apply. And one of the things that I really love about the Super Goop formula is just how elegant it feels on the skin. It doesn't feel greasy or sticky like a normal sunscreen would. It sinks in beautifully. It gives your skin a nice soft finish. And of course it gives you that beautiful glow under makeup. And the e.l.f. one is very similar, although the texture is not identical. I do think the e.l.f. one starts out feeling a little bit thicker than the Super Goop. That one is just incredibly thin for a sunscreen. And the e.l.f. one has a little bit more weight to it, but as you blend it into your skin, it sinks in almost immediately. I feel like it almost dries down faster than the Super Goop one does. And it also gives you that pearlescent glowy finish like the Super Goop one does. So despite the slight differences in application, these look identical on the skin. They feel the same way once they dry down. And when I put makeup on top of either one, I have the exact same results. So this is actually an amazing dupe. I don't always agree with Elf's dupes. I think they can can sort of be hit and miss. I actually just did a whole video about that last week, but I think in this case, they really nailed it. Another really fun dupe that I saw come out recently is this one from Essence. This is the What A Tint Lip and Cheek Tint. And this 
it looks exactly like Benefit's Benetint. It comes in this one universal shade. I know that Benetint does come in other versions now, but the essence looks very similar to the original Benetint. They come in almost identical glass bottles. I think the Benetint one is just a little bit fancier, but they're pretty much the same, right down to the little mini doe foot applicator that you use to apply it with. And when I went to swatch these out, I was really trying to see if these were the same color. And having used the Benefit one for many, many years, I I knew exactly what that one looked like, but I felt like the Essence was a slightly different color. I think they're very close and when you blend them out, they're the same. But one of the things I noticed while doing the swatches is that I applied both swatches, then I went back to blend out the Benefit one and kind of let the Essence one sit on my arm for a second. And then when I went to blend that one, it had already set down and stained my arm. So I really wasn't able to blend it out. So this made me more cautious for when I went to use the product to make sure that the minute I put the Essence one on my skin, I just go ahead and blend it right away. Sometimes we have a tendency to put blush here, then put blush here, then go back and blend. I would not do that. I would just put this on your cheek and blend it immediately, then do the other cheek because it definitely dries down much faster than the Benetint. But let me show you guys just quick application so you can see the Benetint. I just put a couple little dots on my cheek and then just blended it in with my fingers. And what I love about Benetint is just how effortless it is. It just gives you that really beautiful, light rosy glow. You can build it up for more intensity if you want to, or if you just leave one layer, it just looks so natural. It looks like the color that your cheeks would naturally flush. And then over on the Essence side, I did the same thing, just put a couple of drops, blended with my fingers right away, and it really did blend out so similarly to the Benetint. I forgot to mention that the Essence one has sort of a cherry scent to it, and the Benetint is a little bit more of a floral scent, but really these apply the same exact way. They have the same feel and I think once you blend it out that slight variation in color really doesn't matter so much. I felt like they looked pretty much the same on both of my cheeks. So I think that the Essence What a Tint is an amazing dupe for the benefit. I think it's almost identical. Just make sure that you blend it really quickly and you'll be good. I also saw that Revolution had come out with these new lip glosses. These are the Ceramide Lip Swirl and they claim to be glosses, but I kind of feel like they're more of a liquid balm type of a feel. And a lot of people were comparing them to the Rose Perfecto lip balms from Givenchy. And I think it's because of the packaging. Both of them have that sort of swirly look to them. And the Revolution ones do come in very, very similar colors. They even have that really unique deep purple color that the Givenchy had. So it just seemed like they were intentionally duping these, but the Makeup Revolution packaging is a little bit different. It's a lot chunkier and the tubes are plastic versus the Givenchy are glass bottles and they're really nice and heavy. The applicator on the Makeup Revolution one is a doe foot while the Givenchy one is a flat paddle style applicator. And when I went to swatch these out, the Rose Perfecto from Givenchy have a nice amount of pigmentation and the formula is just very silky and smooth while the Makeup Revolution one, you can probably tell in a swatch, they're much thicker and goopier and the pink one has a lot of pigmentation but the purple one was very sheer. And I also notice a big difference when I wear these as well. The Givenchy are very smooth on your lips. They have a nice cushiony, balmy feel but they're not Thick. They do have more of a floral scent that I'm not crazy about, but it kind of fades after a short amount of time. The Revolution ones don't necessarily have a scent to them, but when I'm putting them on, I almost smell like a plastic smell. And while these do have a nice thick and cushiony, balmy feel, they're just a little bit more on the waxy side compared to the Givenchy. They also do that thing that I can't stand when you put a lip balm or a lip gloss on and you go to like press your lips together and you open them and it makes like a string. It's really attractive, I know. And that usually happens when you put too much of something on, but even if I put the lightest layer of these on my lips, it does that same thing. They kind of stick together and make those strings in between my lips, it's gross. Now, don't get me wrong, they do feel really hydrating and initially when I first got these, I loved that about them. I thought that they just felt really nice. Like I said, they have that cushiony, very balm-like feel. But now because of the stringy thing, I'm a little bit afraid to wear them and the Givenchy ones don't do that. So while these are a very similar concept, I do like the higher end one better. I think these could have been really good. I think the formula just misses the mark a little bit. Recently, I got a new lip product from Lottie London at Walmart and these are the Cheeky Kiss Cream Lipstick and Blush Stick. 
These are only six or seven dollars and they're so cute because the applicator is a little heart shape and instantly it reminded me of the Kaja Heart Melter Lip Gloss Sticks from Sephora. The packaging is almost identical except the Lottie London one has a clear cap and the Kaja one is the same color as the tube. But when you open them up, they have the identical heart shaped applicator. Well, they must have used the exact same packaging manufacturer and both formulas have a really soft, melty, balm like texture. The Kaja ones don't say that you can use them on your cheeks, but I'm sure you probably could. Personally, I like these better on my lips than on my cheeks just because they're a little bit more balmy and on the cheeks, they don't really necessarily dry down as much as I want them to. They stay a little bit sticky, but they're not bad. If you don't mind a little dewy feel on your cheeks, I think you would probably really like this, but I just couldn't get over how similar they are. Not just the packaging, but actually how they feel on your lips, the texture, everything is identical. The Lottie London ones, don't seem to really have a fragrance. The Kaja ones might have a slight vanilla scent, but it's so faint, it's almost imperceptible. And like I said, these are around $7 at Walmart. So if you wanna try a really cute tinted lip balm, great for Valentine's Day, definitely give these a try. I think you'll enjoy them. Moving on, everybody seems to be copying Charlotte Tilbury these days, not just the drugstore brands, even higher end brands like Tarte. They recently came out with the Sculpt Tape Contour Wand and it's pretty much identical packaging to the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand. I don't have that one, but the Tarte packaging is identical right down to the sponge tip applicator. You turn the little dial here and squeeze the product up. It's the same. And even though Tarte is considered a more high-end brand, they're not as expensive as Charlotte Tilbury, so you can still save a few dollars by getting the Tarte one. But there are two drugstore contour wands that have also come out this year. We have the Flower Beauty Low Light Liquid contour and the Milani Conceal and Perfect liquid contour. I have all three of these in the light shade. So for Tarte, the shade is soft bronze. I have the Milani in honey and the Flower Beauty in light. And all of them have very similar packaging with the sponge tip applicator. The Flower Beauty one is closer to the Tarte and the Charlotte Tilbury. The packaging is identical to those while the Milani one is a little bit smaller of a tube and the applicator itself is a little bit smaller as well. And when I swatch the color out, I feel like the Tarte Sculpt Tape is a little bit more of a reddish bronze color. The Flower Beauty one is definitely the coolest in tone, so I think this one is the best color as far as contour goes. And then the Milani one is a little bit warmer, but it's not overly warm, and I think you could use this one for bronzing your face, or if you wanted to use it for contour, you could do that as well. When it comes to application, I have heard a lot of complaints about the Flower Beauty one drying too quickly, and I mostly see that with people who do their contour all over their face first and then they blend and this sets down incredibly fast. So you have to work very quickly and really you have to apply this section by section. So you would just apply a little bit to your cheek, grab your brush and blend it out, then do the other cheek, etc. That doesn't really happen with the Tarte and the Milani ones. These you can kind of do your whole face and then go back and blend with no issues. So that is definitely something to consider depending on how you like to do your makeup. But if you like the cooler tone, I do think that the Flower Beauty color is the best one and it's the one that I prefer the most for my skin. But what I love about the Tarte is just how user-friendly it is. It's very easy to blend out and it looks seamless on your cheeks. I actually love the reddish undertone for creating more of a tanned look on my face, not necessarily for contour, but I love a rosy tone bronzer and I think that for bronzing my face, this does an amazing job. So I do really like the Tarte one. Then on the Flower Beauty side, like I said, I think it's a little bit more cool toned. I do think that the Flower Beauty one doesn't blend quite as effortlessly or as easily as the Tarte. It feels like there's a little bit of resistance there as you're applying it. I don't know if the formula is maybe just a little bit thicker or a little bit drier, but just as I'm moving my brush back and forth, it doesn't feel quite as silky and effortless as the Tarte one does. But as long as you blend it immediately, it's not going to look streaky or patchy. It does eventually go into your skin. It just takes a little bit more effort than the Tarte one does. So I really think it's kind of up to you as far as what you are comfortable with. And if you really prefer the color of the Flower Beauty one, just know that the formula is a little bit finicky, but you can definitely make it work. But if I had to compare the Milani and the Flower Beauty, I think the Milani formula is much nicer. It goes into your skin so beautifully, very similar to the Tarte. I'm just not as crazy about the colors that the Milani one comes in because they're all a little bit more warm toned. So hopefully in the future, they'll make more of a contour shade with a grayer 
undertone, I think that would be amazing. Speaking of Milani duping Charlotte Tilbury, they also came out with the Cheek Kiss Liquid Blush Highlight in the shade Luminoso. So this is a beautiful peachy blush lighter and it reminded me so much again of the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand in Peachgasm. So looking at these two side by side, the Charlotte Tilbury packaging is definitely a little bit larger. The Milani packaging is similar to their contour wand. So it's a little bit smaller and really you just squeeze the tube. There's nothing to turn or twist like the Charlotte Tilbury. So that's one negative to the Milani packaging is that it can kind of go everywhere. There's no locking mechanism. It can really get very messy. And then looking at the colors themselves, I think the Peachgasm shade from Charlotte Tilbury is just a beautiful peachy blush with a little bit of highlight mixed in. While the Milani Luminoso liquid blush is I would say a little more highlighter than blush. It seems to not quite have as much color pigment in it. So when you go to apply these to your cheeks, I think that the Charlotte Tilbury one just gives a little bit more color and it really shows up with the first layer. And if I want the Milani side to look like the Charlotte Tilbury, I have to go in with a couple of layers and build it up because rather than being a glowy blush, it acts more like a peachy highlighter. So there's a little bit of difference between these two. I would not say that they're exact dupes. They're a similar concept and vibe, but you're definitely gonna get more color out of the Charlotte Tilbury than you will the Milani. Next up, Flower Beauty also came out with some lipsticks and these are called the Plump Up Gloss Stick. And they reminded me a lot of the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump. Just the fact that they have the same click up style packaging and the claims are very similar as well. The Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips are kind of known for being a lip gloss in stick form and the Flower Beauty ones definitely seemed to have those same types of claims. But even looking at the lipstick bullets themselves, you can just see that the Tarte one looks a little bit more glossy than the Flower Beauty one. And when I went to actually swatch them out, the Tarte one truly looks like a lip gloss. It kind of melts the instant it touches the warmth of your skin and has that really gooey consistency while the Flower Beauty one it is a little bit glossy, but to me, this is more like a tinted lip balm type of consistency than a gloss. So I would say that's the biggest difference between these two. They also both have a little bit of a minty tingle. The Tarte one has a coconut scent, which I know a lot of people aren't crazy about. I personally love it, but uh, the Flower Beauty one is unscented. It just has that little bit of a minty tingle when it goes on your lips, just like the Tarte one. So that's really the only thing that's similar about them. I will say I do like both. I like them for different reasons. I think that the flower ones feel very hydrating on your lips. They're very light feeling. They don't have that goopy, glossy feel that the Tarte do. So they're a little bit more silky and smooth. I like the way the Tarte ones look if I want that glossy finish. But most of the time, I feel like a gloss is more annoying because my hair can get stuck in it. And when I wear the Flower Beauty ones, it doesn't really do that because they're more like a balm. So I feel like these are kind of better for every day. And I usually wear the Tarte ones if I'm going out or I'm gonna be on video and I want that glossy appearance. So definitely not dupes, but I like them both. Another dupe that came out, which I don't think was intentional because they really came out the exact same time, is the Milani Stay Put Liquid Brow Wax and the Benefit Fluff Up Brow Wax. I think that this is just kind of a trend right now and a lot of people are doing the same thing. Both of these claim to give that fluffed up brow look, almost like soap brows, but not quite as slick down or heavy. They have that whole but they still keep your brows looking natural. And they also have very similar packaging. They have the tiny little wand and both formulas look white initially, but they do dry down clear. They feel kind of creamy and both have shea butter in the formula. And because it's a lighter formula, they don't make your brows look wet like other brow gels. They kind of keep that fluffy look. And I think the Milani one distributed the product through my brows a little bit more easily, while the Benefit brush just didn't seem to hold quite as much product. So I felt like I had to keep going back into the tube to get more. And also during the day, the brow with the Milani stayed up actually longer than the Benefit one did. I'm not sure if that's because I had more product in the Milani one or if it just has better hold, but I've found consistently that when I wear the Milani one, my brows just stay a lot longer. So while these are only almost dupes, they're really the same concept. I do prefer the Milani one. I just feel like it lasts a little bit longer. There are also three new mascara dupes. First, we have the L'Oreal Telescopic Lift. This one has been getting a lot of hype lately for reasons you guys I'm sure are aware of. Um, and the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Push-Up Lashes. These are almost identical as far as the claims, as far as the brushes, 
Both of them have a really similar brush that's flat on one side, and then it has the short spiky bristles on the narrower side of the brush when you turn it over. And they both, if you read the descriptions, they claim the same thing. The Charlotte Tilbury one says that it has a load, comb, and lift brush, and the L'Oreal one says it has a load and lift brush. So they're almost identical, and the way that they tell you to use the product, to use the flat side to load up your lashes and then turn it to the side and comb through is exactly the same, same exact instructions. But I have to say these formulas are very different at the end of the day. The L'Oreal one is wetter and it can get clumpy if you don't comb it out really fast. It dries down almost immediately, so you don't have a lot of time to apply tons of coats, but I would say one to two coats gives you tons of length and volume. So when this dries, my lashes actually feel very light and fluffy. I love this one. The Charlotte Tilbury actually makes my lashes feel more weighted down and heavy because the formula is thicker and stickier and I feel like it doesn't completely dry down all the way. So my lashes with the Charlotte Tilbury just don't stay quite as lifted or curled up as the L'Oreal. So while these are similar and L'Oreal may have been trying to copy Charlotte Tilbury, I actually prefer the L'Oreal one. I think you just have to be careful with this because it can be pretty intense and add a lot of product to your lashes. You might even want to just wipe off the brush a little bit first so you don't put too much, but I think the effect that it gives your lashes is definitely worth it. We also have the new Milani Highly Rated Lash Extension Tubing Mascara, which is an incredible dupe for the Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions. I mentioned earlier in the video that they have pretty much the identical ingredient list, and they also have very similar packaging. The Milani one comes in a green tube, and the brushes are almost identical as well. They're the same shape, they're made out of the same material, and when you go to apply these to your lashes, I cannot tell a difference at all. My Thrive Mascara has a wetter formula. It can be prone to clumping, so you definitely have to go easy with it. The Milani is the exact same way, but I can use these interchangeably. If I wasn't actually looking at the product, I wouldn't be able to tell which is which. It's really that close of a dupe. But that being said, this Milani mascara is so polarizing. People either absolutely love it or absolutely hate it. And looking at the Ulta reviews, there are some that say it's identical to the Thrive. I'm never buying the Thrive again because this one is cheaper. And then other people saying it's a clumpy, horrible mess and it made my lashes stick together. And when I've watched other YouTubers review this, I feel like most of them didn't like it. I sometimes feel like I'm the only person who actually does, but I think kind of similar to the Flower Beauty contour wand. You have to work with it a little bit. You have to kind of figure it out. There's a little bit of a learning curve to this. It is a super wet formula. It can get very clumpy. The first couple of times I used it, I definitely had to wipe the brush off first just to get most of the product off and then it worked so much better. But after about a week of use, this dried up to the point where I don't have to do that anymore and it actually works great. I think a lot of people kind of initially tried it, felt like it was clumpy and then just gave up on it and really if you just wait like a week or so, just try it a couple times, it gets so much better. And the beauty of the tubing formula is that it's not going to smudge under your eyes. It's great for your lower lashes especially and it stays put all day. It comes off super easily at night with just water. I kind of forgot what a pain in the neck mascara is to remove after using tubing formulas because they're just so easy. So this is just one of those products I think has a bit of a learning curve and you just have to give it some time and not give up on it right away and I think you'll really like it. There are probably some people out there who might feel like this is too heavy if you have like finer thinner lashes or ones that don't hold a curl as much. It may not be for you either way but if your biggest issue with this is that it's clumpy or it's too wet just give it a little bit of time and before it dries out just make sure to wipe off the brush and I think you'll really enjoy it. Another mascara dupe is the e.l.f. Lash and Roll versus the Benefit Roller Lash. These are also incredibly similar. You could totally Totally tell that e.l.f. was trying to dupe the benefit with this one. The packaging is super similar. It's the black tube with the peachy accents and the brush inside is slightly curved with the shorter bristles like on the inside of the curve and then the longer ones on the outside. They're pretty much exactly the same and when I apply these two I feel like the formula is identical and both of them are not 
too wet or too dry. It's more of a medium formula. And I think both of these give really nice length and volume. And I find that my lashes look almost identical on both sides. In fact, for me, the e.l.f. has a little bit more of an edge because it doesn't smudge under my eyes and the Benefit one almost always does. So I would say just like the Milani and Thrive, this one is another really good dupe. I know I've also mentioned this dupe before, but we have the e.l.f. O-Face lipsticks versus the NARS Audacious lipsticks. And again, almost identical. The packaging is super similar. They both come in black tubes. The NARS one is a little bit more slick feeling. The e.l.f. one has that sort of rubberized soft touch packaging. Both have the magnetic closure, which is really nice. And the shape of the bullet itself is exactly the same, right down to the brand logos that are engraved into the front of the bullet. So this is another dupe that I think is pretty obvious that e.l.f. was trying to copy the NARS. Both formulas have a satin finish and one swipe really high pigmentation and not only do they apply the same way but I felt like the wear and the wear time is exactly the same one day I wore the elf on one side of my lips and the NARS on the other and they lasted the exact same amount of time they faded the same way too and I love how these just kind of gradually fade they don't leave a weird ring around your lips they fade very evenly I saw no difference in the performance of either one the only slight difference is that the elf has a really mild vanilla scent the NARS are unscented and I've seen a lot of comments both on my channel and on other people's channels when we're talking about these O face lipsticks that they would never pay nine dollars for an elf lipstick and I get that because elf has always historically been a really affordable brand but this is one of those instances that I was talking about in the beginning where they really upped the formula to the point where this is performing exactly like a high-end lipstick and normally if you're gonna pay five or six dollars for a lipstick you're not really gonna expect it to apply and wear like a NARS lipstick, but in this case, you're paying $9 instead of 34 and you're basically getting the identical thing. The satin lipsticks that they had before these, the Seriously Satin, I felt like were so much drier. They didn't apply as smoothly as these. They didn't wear as long as these. So it's not just upgraded packaging. The formula is definitely way above what it used to be. And you can tell that they really put more money into these than they do their other lipsticks. So for a few dollars more, I don't mind paying for a better formula. You guys will have to let me know if you've tried these. Do you feel like they're worth the $9? Because now that I've tried them, I definitely do, but I can see where people are coming from if they haven't tried them, just basing it off of other e.l.f. products that they've tried in the past. But these are so much better than any other lip product that they've done so far. This next dupe isn't really an intentional dupe because they came out around the same time, but this is the Revlon Illuminance Skin Caring Foundation versus the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Foundation. I saw quite a few people comparing these two when they first came out and I have to agree, I find them to be incredibly similar. Both of these claim to have medium coverage and both have a luminous finish. Both of them have squalane in the formula. The Revlon has a little bit more. It's like the fifth ingredient and the Mario, it's like the 21st ingredient, but they're both supposed to be more of a hydrating formula. The Mario comes in 30 shades and the Revlon comes in 28, which I thought was a great shade range for drugstore. And I did feel like when I was applying these that both of them had to build up a little bit to get to medium coverage. They started out more like a light coverage and I think they both have a very similar finish on the skin. Indoors, they look almost identical with just a slight hint of glow and a very skin-like texture. But then when I went outside, I noticed that the Mario one is a little bit more glowy than the Revlon due to the mica in the formula. So I do prefer the Revlon a little bit more over the Mario just because it seemed to sit a little bit nicer on my skin and without those glowy particles, it didn't seem to enhance my texture quite as much as the Mario one did. I also I also felt like the Mario foundation was a little bit thicker and it took me longer to blend it out, but it didn't necessarily give more coverage than the Revlon. So they kind of had similar coverage, but the Revlon was just thinner and it sank into my skin much quicker and easier. So I just liked the way that this one applies a little bit more. I do like the Mario foundation. I'm not bashing it. I think it's really nice. But if I had to pick one that I liked a little bit more, I would say the Revlon just because it's not quite as sparkly. And for me, I just thought that the application was a little bit easier. So I don't think these are exact dupes, but they're pretty close. If you've been wanting a foundation that's similar to the Mario, 
I think you would really like this. It's way more affordable. So anyway, guys, those are all of the dupes that I have so far from 2023. I think we can definitely expect to see a lot more as the year goes on, but I would love to hear your thoughts on these down below as always. And if you have some time and you'd like to check out some more videos on my channel, I'll go ahead and put some right up here for you to check out next. I wanna thank you guys so much for clicking on this video and spending time with me. I appreciate it so, so much. If you're new here and you enjoy drugstore makeup and dupes, be sure to hit the subscribe button before you go and I'll see you guys in my next video. Take care. Bye.